Hi guys, uh, my name is Dr. Johnny Guckian uh, and I'm a clinical teaching fellow based in the northeast of England. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about simulation and more specifically patient sim or online deteriorating patient simulator. Just the guys, my, my text isn't coming up my, on my screen. Um, so firstly, what I'm going to talk about um, is my background, who I am, um, what is, um, wh why am I here, what is MediSense, um, and specifically, why have we gone into the area of simulation? Um, then I'm going to move on to speak about uh, patient sim, take you through a journey into patient sim. Um, what is it? Then I'm going to talk about our evaluation of patient sim. Was it any good? Before finally moving on to the future. Where do we see patient sim going? Quite a bit, bit to get through. Let's start. Okay. So, as I previously mentioned, I'm Dr. Johnny Guckian. I'm just a little uh, teaching doctor based in the northeast of England. I'm not a, a consultant or an attending. I, I'm not a professor. I'm certainly not a tech genius. Now, that's an important disclaimer because uh, we, we do have a tech genius. Um, unfortunately, uh, he couldn't be with us uh, today, um, but um, you can tweet him uh, to the handle at jetbackwards, and he's assured me that if you have any technical questions, that he can handle them. Now, we might see that as a challenge, so um, please feel free. Any tech questions, Twitter, at jetbackwards. Um, also saves me the embarrassment if I don't know. It's all magic to me, this tech stuff. So, uh, well, why me? Well, I do have an interest in uh, medical education, and I try to do my best to help with technology-enhanced learning. So, that led me to found MediSense Medical Education. It's a web-based platform um, filled with games, videos, podcasts, and a real addiction to terrible medical puns. Um, it's independent of any institution or any university, uh, and we're just a group of junior doctors and medical students doing this in our spare time. It's going pretty well. Uh, we get tens of thousands, uh, sometimes hundreds of thousands of hits all over the world. So, why have we taken on the monster that is simulation? Well, firstly, it's important to look at what simulation is. For the uninitiated, simulation ranges from anything from a mock roleplay chat with your BFF to the full $200,000 walking, talking, all singing, all dancing, sim man or sim lady. Now, there's good evidence that sim works. The literature suggests that um, sim helps uh, individuals manage clinically um, deteriorating patients. Therefore, it's used in medical schools throughout the world. Now, sim isn't just limited to the medical world. We actually borrow this idea from aviation. Um, that's designed to prevent serious errors. And again, it seems to work. So this stuff has gone mainstream from the classics um, to the really specific, um, to the downright bizarre. <laughs> it's a great game. So, as with any med ed intervention, there are limitations. Sim can require full teams of people just to make a scenario realistic. It's, that's, that's sometimes unachievable. And as I alluded to, Sim can cost a lot with models requiring regular maintenance and SIM technicians, and props costing a small fortune. Therefore, there can be issues with accessibility. From organizing SIM in, in my own time at work, I know that it takes time. We have to plan weeks in advance and clear full days for a good SIM. Moreover, SIM can actually be genuinely intimidating um, for the students, particularly. Not so long ago, I was that medical student. Um, and you know, this, this intimidation can be a real important factor. So we've got these issues of accessibility, cost, intimidation. So what we thought was to create a digital solution to these problems. This is patient sim. So practically, what is patient sim? Well, it's an online deteriorating patient simulator, and it's the first in the world of its kind. In practice, what does this actually mean? Well, on your desktop, you've got a patient to look after. There he is. Let's call him Ted. So Ted's life is in your hands. He's pretty sick, and you've got to do something about that. Patient Sim monitors Ted's vital signs, which will change depending on how you interact with him. 
So you can give them oxygen, you can give them fluids, um, and you can pretty much order any scan or investigation that you want. So um, after you've actually um, interacted with, with um, Ted and you've completed the simulation, you'll be given a debrief, um, as you would do in any normal simulation. This debrief will numerically score you on your performance. It will highlight key learning points and suggest areas for reflection. So now we come to the technical stuff, where I'll remind you, at Jet Backwards is where it's at. So how does patient sim actually work? It mimics physiological algorithms to realistically respond to interventions. So do you want to give fluids? Well, you're going to have to pop in a cannula first, as you would do in real life. If you give fluids, it will increase the blood pressure, but it'll take some time to do that, as it would do with a real patient. Have you requested an ABG? Well, you're going to need to wait a while for that to come back. Patient sim requires no facilitator, and it logs every action that you take and revisits them upon debrief. So let's go through the journey of patient sim. You log in, and you see the launch screen. You might be thinking, well, that looks like many social media pages I've seen. And indeed, it does have social media capabilities. We haven't activated those yet. You'll be able to see your score um, on the right-hand side, I haven't done very well there. Um, and that score um, marks you on things like diagnosis, decision making, um, and investigations. And you can compare your score um, to the simulator average or to your institution average. And I'll come back to institutions shortly. So then we come to the important part, the simulation. So this is a screenshot um, of actually our older version. There's a, there's a newer version uh, live now. Um, this is the patient monitor in the middle. Um, and that's constantly updated. Then you've got Ted on the left. He's not looking too good, a bit blue. Um, if you scroll over Ted, you'll be able to examine him. So when I say examine him, what will happen is you scroll over him, um, and the examination findings will pop up. Um, on the right, you've got the interactions. Um, so you can, um, you know, you, this is where you can put, put a cannula in, put on oxygen, and interact with the patient so as to hopefully improve his physiology. Finally, we come to the simulation builder. Now, the builder allows you to create your own simulations, which anybody can see. Then we come to institution access. So institution access allows institutions to build simulations which are unique to their own institutions. And they can only be seen by members of their institutions. For example, specialties, hospitals, or, uni or universities. Now, this has a number of applications. For example, if there was a serious untoward incident in a hospital, that hospital trust could develop a simulation mimicking aspects of that case. This is already done with hands-on 3G simulation um, in root cause analysis. But here, patient sim brings a learning to everyone. This could technically be brought to every staff member in that trust. Okay. So the next step was to test the simulator. Was it actually any good? So um, our evaluation um, process consisted of six relatively simple steps. We recruited um, some users, um, newly qualified junior doctors in the UK. We gave them a pretest on sepsis. We gave them a sepsis um, scenario in the simulator. We gave them an identical post-test. And then finally, we followed up with a questionnaire looking at their confidence in various domains and if they felt the, um, the patient sim was was relevant or easy to use. And turning to the results, we had some promising findings. Um, 23 newly qualified junior doctors responded, and they scored the simulator quite well um, in terms of ease of use and relevance. They felt that patient sim increased their confidence in various domains, such as recognizing the acutely deteriorating patient and recognizing changes in vital signs. Now, surprisingly, there wasn't actually any statistically significant difference in pre- or post-test scores. I was interested as to why that was the case. So I looked into the limitations of our study, um, primarily looking at the feedback um, from the users. It seems that they felt that the simulation itself was a bit too basic for new junior doctors. Um, they are actually quite sim-experienced, having just gone through um, very high-fidelity simulation um, during their medical school finals. 
Therefore, it might be relevant to uh, apply this evaluation to more sim-naive medical students. Uh, indeed, we're currently undertaking that. Um, so what next? What's left in the future? So we want to learn more about our simulator. I'm not here to sell patient sim to you. I want to learn more about our simulator so that we can hopefully improve patient care. Therefore, we've actually decided to soft launch the simulator today um, to get your views, your ideas, your concerns, your expectations, your criticisms. Um, we plan to build many more simulations, and with that, a community of people interested in sim. We want to take patient sim to institutions to help them hopefully improve their e-learning and learn more about their organizations. We've got lots of bonus features um, to add as we go along, for example, like social media interaction, a bit of gamification. Um, and we also plan to uh, expand into other specialties, having had interest from mental health, uh, pediatrics, and obs and gynae. We also plan to release apps based on this. Um, at the moment, Patient Sim is purely on desktop, um, and it's designed for desktop use. If you're trying to use it on your phones, it's not the best experience of Patient Sim, so I recommend it on laptops or desktops. Now, one thing I really want to point out is that this simulator isn't just for high-concept, complex scenarios. It could potentially be used to teach kids about basic life support in schools. There's so much potential, and we want your help, whether you're a doctor, a student, a healthcare professional, or a patient. We want to change the world of online simulation, and that starts today.